Okay, let's uh, start. So welcome. Well, how do I speak in this one? Okay. I'll, usually I try to move around, but this time I, I guess I have to stay here in, in order to be in the light and to be close to my computer and to move forward. So welcome to my talk about uh, PyTest. Before we actually get started about PyTest, um, let me talk a little bit about uh, testing methodologies. There are basically two testing methodologies in the, in, the, in the world. One of them is called TDD, which is uh, Test Driven Development. The idea is that you write some test that obviously fails because you don't have the code yet, and then you write the code, the test passes, you check in the version control, you write more tests, more code, version control, and so on. In this way, uh, as you write your code, you'll see that uh, you can always run your test and you will all, all can, all can always make sure, you can always make sure that uh, the things that you had written earlier are still working. And that's brilliant. And uh, even if you don't write the test before, even if you write the test a little bit after, as I do usually, it's still the same or very similar uh, methodology. And then there is the other methodology, which is the real world. And in the real world, you usually get a source code with hundreds of thousands of lines of code and no tests. And, uh, then you can never be sure that any changes you make will still, uh, the rest of the code will still function. And starting to add tests to this code base is really, really hard. So um, in this talk, I'm going to talk mostly about the basics of PyTest. So it's a rather be beginner's talk about PyTest. I'm going to show how to use PyTest. And it's mostly relevant for the first part when you start writing uh, code in, the, in a more like a TDD fashion. Uh, if you want to uh, write uh, something more complex, if you want to deal with um, uh, projects that already exist, then first of all I recommend there is going to be a talk tomorrow about mocking, and that's uh, rather relevant. Yeah, thank you, the speaker. Um, so that, that's uh, one, one thing. And uh, that's basically part of what I do. So my name is Gabor Sabo, as I've mentioned. I'm usually trying to help companies uh, write code faster or in a way that is safer or saner, um, which is nice. To, it sounds nice, basically meaning that I help companies uh, introduce uh, testing, testing automation, continuous integration, and things like this, or better development practices, uh, agile-ish things, even if you don't word, use the word agile. So now PyTest. So PyTest is not standard Python, so you'll have to install it, and uh, I recommend using something virtual so for, for example, virtual end, and then you got just you install it with pip and um, you have PyTest. And then we can start to look at uh, some code. So let's assume that we have this uh, uh, Python module uh, with a simple function, is anagram, uh, that checks whether two strings that I give to it uh, are, uh, consist from the same letter. So we are anagrams. Uh, the implementation is rather simple. I just sort the, the, the characters and I check whether the two lists are the same. So how can we test this? How can we test that this code, and right, yes, it's really simple. How can we test? We run the code, we provide some input, and check whether the output is correct. So I write another file in which I import the, either the module that I'm testing or just a single function from the module that I'm testing, and I'm writing a function. Uh, usually something tests something, so for example, test anagram. And within that function, I call the function under test. It's usually called application under test or device under test, if it's something more devicey, or just function under test. I call the function is anagram with two uh, strings that are supposed to return true because they are anagrams. Uh, and then I use the standard assert statement of Python, uh, checking whether what I got return in return that's true. Then I have another example, again, with two strings that are anagrams. And because, because I'm really uh, going to the strange things, I even go uh, with an example at the bottom where I put in two strings that are not expected to return false, and I use not to convert it to two, true, and then again check it with the assert. So this is really simple Python. There's nothing special here, nothing PyTesty here, basically. Maybe only the, the fact that I'm calling the file test something and also the function test something. Now I could run this function and just uh, uh, adding an, another line calling this function and I could run it with Python or I can use PyTest that I just installed to run it. So I can run PyTest and the name of the file 
and then PyTest will execute this te test function. Basically, it will look in the, in the file and, f and look for all the functions that are called test something and run each one of them. And then we'll create this uh, report. Now, in this report, what you can see is um, uh, some generic data, the platform, it's a Mac OS and the version of Python that I was using, the root directory where this uh, code ran when I ran it. And then you can see the more in, uh, interesting part. Collected white items is because you had one uh, testing function there, so that was one item. The number of asserts is not relevant. It's, you can have any, as many as you want. Uh, it's still considered one test. Then below that, you have the list of files. So you could, we could run it with several test files. And it's going to list all the test files that you have. In this case, we had one test file. And after that, there is this dot. That dot represents the, the single test function that we had and the fact that it was successful. That means that dot just after it. And at the bottom, we have another summary of uh, this running. So that's really fine. Uh, now we have an application. We have a test for it. It works. Everything fine. We can uh, send it to their customers or deploy it or whatever. And after a day or two, we get a report that the client says that, if, that uh, there is a pair of strings that they gave to this function, and uh, they were expecting it to return true, but the function returned false. So what do you do then? They're basically a bug, uh, a bug report. So the first thing they want to have, you want to verify that there is really a bug, that there is, this is really the behavior of the function. So you write uh, fun uh, another test function, in this case, this uh, test multi-word anagram, uh, with, which, with which I try to reproduce the bug. Okay? And uh, the complaint was about uh, the word anagram uh, versus nag ram in three uh, three words, that this didn't work. Now I added another test case, so I have two asserts there, and uh, because I was thinking, okay, maybe the spaces, but the two spaces, one space, what was the problem, I, I didn't know. So I added this, and uh, I said, okay, if this passes, then the, com then the, the complaint was incorrect, so that there's no, no such bug. But if uh, there is a bug, so if this, uh, the function doesn't, doesn't return true, as I would expect, then obviously there is a bug. So let's run it with PyTest. And uh, this is the report we get. So again, uh, we get the generic report. Then you can see the collected two items because now we had two testing functions. Okay, so there were two items. And then below that, you, you can see the name of the file and the dot, which represents the testing uh, function that passed, the one that we had earlier, and an F, which means fail. So the other testing function failed. And that's why what you, what you see in this F. And then in the addition, you can see this, uh, the details below that. And in the details, you can see, first of all, that the first assert that I just added, uh, the, there we had uh, two words on both sides, that passed. But the second one, where you see this uh, arrowish thing, that's the assert that failed. And then you can see, that actually, the details of the failure, which is not that interesting here, because we were expecting true, and we got false, so it says, basically, failed and didn't give me any details. Later on, we'll see how we can, how can we might be able to get uh, some uh, more details. So there you, there you are. At the bottom, there is the one failed and one passed test. So what do you do at this point? Okay, you verify that the test is, uh, that the, the bug is really there. You have a test, it's failing. So what's the next thing? The next thing is probably that you want to fix uh, the code. Now, but imagine that you already have like hundreds of thousands of of these, or hundreds of these test functions, and it might take more than uh, nine seconds to run it. Maybe it, it takes a couple of minutes. So during the time that you want to, that you fix the bug, you don't want to run all the tests every time, because that would be, take too, too long. So in the, in the, instead of that, you would prefer to run just that single test that's failing until you fix the bug, and then once they fix the bug, then you run the whole thing, checking whether you, didn't, uh, whether you broke anything else. So that's quite easy in PyTest, because you can just try run PyTest, the name of the test file, and double colon, and then the name of the test, the test function, basically. And then it will run that specific test function, and you don't waste the time running all the tests. And once you have done fixing it, then uh, everything is okay, and you can, um, um, you can run the whole test again and, and check that everything else is working. So that's one way of uh, uh, handling this. But what happens if your manager comes and says, OK, that's fine that you verified this, this bug, but we don't have the time uh, fixing it now. 
We ha you have all kinds of other priorities, and then they are more important. Another feature, other more important bugs. What do you de do then? So you have a test now failing. What, do you, what are you going to do with this? If you check in version control, then that test starts failing for every user, every developer from now on. And then what do, they will ask you, okay, why, why is this failing? And you said, okay, this is okay. Boss told us that we, uh, we should ignore it for now. Okay, but then suddenly, soon you will have a couple of other of these tests that are failing, and soon you'll say that, okay, there are tests failing, so when a new test starts failing, you won't even look at it, because you say, okay, there are a couple of tests failing, it's okay. And then basically you lost all the value that you had in the test, because you can't test, trust your test anymore. So that's not a good idea. So what can I do? I can remove the whole thing, I can just delete it, but I worked hard to to write this test, so I don't want to do that. I can comment it out and check it in, uh, but then it sort of, again, uh, got lost in, in, in the comments, and it's unclear what is, what is there. And uh, but luckily, luckily, PyTest has a feature in exactly to deal this with, with this situation. You can take the test and mark it as a test that you're expecting it to fail. So you, for this, you have to import the PyTest uh, the, the Py uh, module in your test script, and then uh, add a decorator to the, fun to the function that you're expecting to fail. So you say pytest mark and x fail. And then in addition, you can put a, a parameter to this uh, uh, decorator. You say you can give a reason. And I really uh, recommend to give a reason, and that reason probably should be the bug number that describes this pr problem or some reference or where we, people can read why is this test uh, there what kind of problem is there, why is it not being fixed, why is it uh, uh, expected to fail, okay? This is, in some languages, it's also called, this type of test called to-do test, because it's something that you're supposed to do later on. So now you can uh, run this test again, and it will uh, tell you, uh, at this line, it will tell you that there was one successful test, the dot, and the x means that there is a one test which is expected to fail, and, it, uh, and uh, so we don't know what's going on with that. The total means that it's still successful. So uh, if people look at the re test results, they don't see failures. And uh, if my slides were uh, with colors, then you would see that the, when you, usually when the test runs and it's successful, then it's everything is green. When it fails, then it's red. So and this would be green because everything uh, because it's successful, except of the one that we are expecting it to fail. So we can check it in, and later on when we fix the bug, then we can remove that uh, decorator and, uh, and we already have the, the test uh, verifying it. So sometimes you actually want to see what kind of tests, uh, what, which tests were those that were expected to fail, and you can use the minus r, minus, minus rx flag for that of the PyTest, and it will add this additional report where you can see uh, that there is an x fail test, the name of the test, and even the reason uh, where you can have the, the bug number. So it's quite useful. There is another kind of uh, um, tool in uh, PyTest, another kind of test which are rather similar, is tests that we are being skipped. So there are all kinds of uh, environments, especially I think in, user, in, in open source projects, but it also in, in companies it can happen, that uh, you have tests that are specific for example operating system, or specific to various things that are, be, that are installed or not. Uh, you have some in, uh, tests that are specific to MySQL, but you don't, uh, and other tests for PostgreSQL, for example. Uh, in this case, I had I created three tests, uh, each one for each uh, operating system: OS X, uh, Linux, and uh, Windows. And I, ha I used the skip if decorator, saying that this test should be skipped if the conditions met. So the skip if gets a condition. And if that condition is met, then the, the, the test is skipped. And it can also get a reason, again, explaining why that specific test is being uh, skipped. So this can be really useful if we have tests that are um, uh, some, that, that we don't want to run in certain conditions. In addition, there is a force test here, which is just skipped without the if. Uh, this is just going to be skipped all the time. It won't ever run. It's much less useful, but there are cases, for example, if you, have a, you had a test, and you made some changes to the code, and then um, the st test started to break, and not just started to break, uh, it started to uh, create really, really big problems, 
removing, uh, deleting uh, stuff from your hard disk, or things that you don't want to, to even to run. So the big difference between the, um, the earlier one, the X fail test, and the skip test is that the X fail test are running, but they are expected to fail. So it's okay that fail. And the skip test, or the if skip, uh, skip if test, they don't even run. So if you have some code that for now cannot even run because it would uh, create some uh, uh, big problem or for some other reason cannot even, if doesn't even compile, for example, then you can uh, mark it uh, skip. It's still probably better than removing it, assuming that you, you're planning to fix it, uh, because then again you can use the you can use a tool to to, ver to see what uh, what are the skip tests. So if you run this normally, just pytest test and name of the test, you would get get a report like something like this. You will see that you have got four items uh, um, collected because there were four uh, test cases, um, and uh, and in the re uh, report below you have to see the na name of the file and then four uh, S marks because four tests were skipped and one with a dot that was a successful test. And of course, you can see that here I don't really test anything. I just use the assert method because I, was, I wanted just to show you how the functionality works. You can also use the minus R flag again with S this time. So you can say pytest py minus RS. And this time it will report all the skipped tests. So if you want to see what tests are skipped, then it's a nice tool to, to, uh, to show. And so you can see that there is the minus RX, then the minus RS. And actually, there are a couple of other flags that you can provide after the minus R. And if you're quick, then you can remember these flags. Like you have three seconds for that. If you're not so quick, then you can remember the last one, which is pytest minus H, that will just print out the help, and it will include the listing of all these flags and a much better explanation that I can give. So that's one flag. Then there are a couple of other flags with, uh, for PyTest. For example, the minus V is the verbose mode then can, that will pr uh, print out which tests were run and which were passed and which were skipped and so on. So that can be also very useful by itself. And we'll see that a little bit later. What happens to, uh, to things that you're printing out to standard output and standard error? Normally, PyTest will eat them up and it will hide them. Uh, in order to not to confuse that with the standard output, the standard, the regular reporting of PyTest. But if you ask it, ask it nicely, providing the minus S uh, flag, then uh, PyTest will print out the, uh, actually the, 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 the strings that were supposed to go to the standard output or standard error. It can be especially useful if you happen to debug it with printout statements or if the application itself is printing things to the standard output and standard error, and you would like to, to see that. The minus Q flag here is just the quiet mode of PyTest, uh, meaning that uh, don't print out most of the uh, standard uh, reporting of PyTest. You can still see this dot, for example, and the last line, uh, the, which, is come, which is PyTest reporting, um, but mostly you will see the output from the, from the test or from the, skip, uh, from the uh, application itself. Now, I mentioned that uh, PyTest can uh, have uh, nice uh, reporting in case of failure, failure. Some other testing frameworks have these speci special fun functions instead of the assert. Uh, special functions that uh, you use in order to compare uh, different uh, data types of different data structures. In PyTest, you don't need that. You can just use the standard assert, and it uses introspection to look at what you are actually passing to it and from that create you some report. And I have lots of lots of examples in my standard training material. Here I'm going to show you just a, a couple of them. So for example, in this case, I was comparing a string that I got back from the function to an expected string, and they are not the same. So uh, PyTest will show me the two strings, one uh, below the other, and then I can easily find which character uh, was different. Of course, I, this is I easy only if they only, ha only have a few characters. Because if I have lots of lots of characters, then finding on that the character 78 was different, it's going to be really hard for a human. Uh, luckily, PyTest uh, deals with that. So if you have uh, two long strings, and in this case I created two long strings with all the printable ASCII characters twice, and in the middle I put in just two, character, two different characters in the two versions, and then the reporting looks like this. It will tell you that 90 characters were skipped from the beginning, and then you had a different one. In one of them is A, the other one is B, and the rest is the same again. So in long strings, it, it points out exactly 
uh, where the difference is, which, is, which can be really useful, because now I can look at it and see exactly what the, where the problem is. Uh, with lists, especially with short lists, so in this case, I have two functions. They are returning two lists, and, I'm, and the assertion is just comparing these two lists, uh, expecting them to be the same. And uh, the, the report just says uh, the first element that they differ. So it is say that A is not, not, doesn't, it's not equal to, to X, the, two, the fir two, first two elements. Um, and uh, that's not very useful, but if you if at the bottom you look, it says that you can use the minus V flag again, the verbose flag, to see more details. So you can use that, and that will show you exactly that the first two characters are different and the last two characters are different. So it can be quite useful, and it, it, it quite easily sh you can find the problem, or at least uh, see what, uh, have an idea what the problem might be. Uh, with dictionaries, again, here I create two dictionaries. In the first example, I create I mean, in most cases, I create big dictionaries, as I think 100 or 200 keys. In the first one, I have a key that has different value in the two, two dictionaries. In the second example, I have different keys, a single key that is, is only exists in one of the dictionaries, and a single key only exists in the other one. And the PyTest reporting tells me exactly that. So in the first one, it says, OK, you had this key A, and the, the value was DEF. In the other one, you had an the same key as with different value. And uh, the reporting below, it says that the left side, uh, one of the dictionaries had this key and the right side didn't have. And on the other hand, the right side had a different key which the left side didn't have. So it's pretty obvious what, uh, what uh, differs here. Uh, if you have multiple uh, test cases, uh, and usually you have many test functions. And in this case, I have like five, and some of them fail, some of them are successful. So if I run them, you'll see that some of them passing, some of them are failing. And uh, PyTest doesn't care that it, these are asserts because it captures all the asserts and then uh, just report, prints the report. And it will go on and uh, print out all the test failures. So even if you have 100 tests and 90 of them fail, you will get all the reports which sometimes is very useful, but sometimes you would prefer just to stop the after the first test failure because you don't care uh, that you have 100 other ones because maybe the whole reason is, bec is because you had a syntax error somewhere and that's, the that's why uh, all the tests are failing. So for that, you can use the minus X flag and it will stop after the first test failure. And if you are some strange, for some strange reason, you don't want to stop at the first test, but only after the 40 second uh, failed test, then you can use this uh, max failed uh, flag and it will uh, wait for 42 sec uh, failures and only then stop the test running. Now there is another uh, whole other thing in the, in the world of testing, it's called fixture. So fixture is usually, uh, what the testing world calls fixture is the, is the setup. So if, for, for example, if you're running, uh, trying to run a test, you'll have to set up a database, you give some data to it, put some data in it, maybe you have to set up all kinds of computers uh, and uh, install them and, uh, for the test. So you have lots of uh, things to do, and this is called a fixture. Um, in PyTest, there is another thing that's called fixture, and we'll get to that uh, in, in a second. The point here is that uh, in, uh, you have lots of test functions, and in every test function, you have to hold, do this whole setup and probably at the end, you'll have to clean up afterwards, okay? So what, you, what can you do then? Uh, you can refactor out this code that you are uh, running uh, at the beginning of each test function or at the end of each test function. And PyTest even uh, provides a standard fa facility for that. It provides a function or you can actually, you can write your own setup function. And if you have that setup function, that will be called before each test run each, before each test function, and if you have a function called teardown function, it will be called after each uh, test function. So in this case, it will have setup, test one, teardown. Then again, setup, test two, teardown. Then again, setup, test three, three teardown. There are other things that PyTest calls fixtures, and these are mostly tools that help you set up these environment. And one of them is uh, tempdir or tmpdir. It, uh, the way it works, it provides, uh, so first of all, it provides a temporary directory where you can uh, save, uh, when your application can save the data, and so two, two tests won't interact with each other. 
The way it works is that when you declare your test function, you can t you say that you're expecting tmpdir to be uh, passed to this test function. But who calls this test function? Uh, PyTest calls this test function, so it's not you. So when PyTest sees that you're expecting the tmpdir, it will actually prepare a temporary directory, an object that represents the temporary directory, and passes it into your test function. And that's called de depend dependency injection, at least in Angular in some uh, areas. And I'll finish in a second. Uh, PyTest have lots of other features, and I wanted to show them all, but unfortunately, we don't really have time. So I've just had a, a short list of that, that creating your own uh, fixtures and running tests in parallel or selecting t uh, tests by all kinds of marks that, for example, you can have um, um, you can mark tests that, that these are the smoke tests and these are the database tests, and then you can select based on the name how to uh, several test, uh, tests uh, or by directory structure and all kinds of other things. There I had an example uh, showing you uh, uh, Flask and how to test Flask, but we don't have time for it. So if you're interested in it, then find me uh, after the presentation or in the uh, party and I might uh, be able to show you. A couple of resources just to mention. Obviously, pytest.org. Uh, there is this book uh, by Brian uh, Oaken about pytesting, uh, about pytest. And if you are listening to podcasts, and if you don't listen to Talk Python to me, then go ahead and subscribe to that podcast. It's great. And that's uh, my talk. Uh, my name is Gabor Sabo again. Uh, the slides uh, partially are on this website called EduMaven, and I'm going to upload the rest of them there. I guess we don't have time for questions, so if you have any questions, then in the break or after the presentation or after the um, rest of the talks. Thank you very much.